Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar wa lillahi Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar wa lillahi Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar wa lillahi Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasalli ala rasulihi alkareem We praise him and send blessings upon his noble messenger We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and send blessings upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's noble messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim I seek refuge with Allah from the accursed shaytan so when you recite the Quran, first seek refuge in Allah from the Satan, the expelled from mercy. Surah Nahal, ayat number 98. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. He is the most gracious. He is the most merciful. We ask him to make us remember this beautiful ayat and to say these words all the time, often, very often, inshallah, Amin. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi adad khalqi warida nafsihi wa zinat arshi wa midada kalimati Allah is free from imperfection and I begin with his praise as many times as the number of his creatures accordance with his good pleasure equal to the weight of his throne and equal to the ink that may be used in recording the words for his praise. Praise be to Allah. We seek his help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one having no partner. I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu is a slave and messenger. Rabbi Shrahli Sotri, wa yasirli amri, wa halul uqadatam min lisani yafkahu qawli. O my Lord, expand for me my breast with assurance and ease for me my task and untie the knot from my tongue that they may understand my speech. Surah Taha, ayat number 25 to 28. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. May Allah make us of those who see goodness in others. You know, every human being has good uh, points and some not so good points. But if we focus on the good, we will get along better. Our relationships will be better. And when we see some good in others, we should try to incorporate it in ourselves. And uh, let's pray for each other that we all continue to become better people and to leave behind our sins, inshallah, ameen. Alhamdulillah, we're going to begin a new surah today, Surah Zuhruf. Uh, surah Zuhruf uh, is going to cover, um, you know, different aspects. One, it's going to talk about um, Hafzat Ibrahim al Islam. It's going to talk about questions of the Makkans and what, what the Quraysh used to ask. It's going to cover worldly life, that it's temporary, and how Shaitan attacks us. It's going to cover some things about Hazrat Musa al Islam and Hazrat Isa al Islam also, inshallah ta'ala. And we're going to know that the blessings of Allah, the biggest blessing of Allah is the Quran Majid. And um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, does not like shirk, of course, we know that. And uh, inshallah, that um, the reward for belief, what it is, Walaikum Islam and the punishment of disbelief. These are the things that are going to be covered in Surah Zukhruf, inshallah, today. We begin with Surah Zukhruf, and as you know, it means the gold ornaments. Zukhruf means the gold ornaments. If you could find that on the screen. Um, and uh, Alhamdulillah, 
It is the 43rd surah of the Quran Majid, 43rd, and um, it has 89 ayats and it has 7 rukus, alhamdulillah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahir rahman rahim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حامين والكتاب المبين إنا جعلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون وإنه في كتاب لدينا لعلي حكيم أفنضرب عنكم الذكر صفحا أن كنتم قوما مسرفين من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful Hameen by the clear book Remember uh, the surahs that are beginning with Hameen and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He swears by the clear book. So we were talking about uh, why this book is called the clear book and what were some of the reasons we discussed yesterday. Why is this book clear? Hmm? No doubts in it? Yes, very good, Rabia. Anybody else? If you speak louder, then I can hear you because then I cannot hear you if you speak softly. Anybody else? Why is it a clear book? It distinguishes from right and wrong, right? It tells you what is halal and haram. So, uh, alhamdulillah. And what else? Okay, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Ha, meem. These are haruf e muqatat, the disjointed letters, which only Allah knows the meaning, by the clear book. Clear book because it distinguishes from right and wrong. There's no crooked, crookedness in it. There's nothing that you can doubt. Inshallah, it'll open the way to the truth. Indeed, we have made it in an Arabic Quran uh, so that you may understand. It's in Arabic because the people who it came down to were Arabians and they spoke the language of Arabic. And Arabic language is very, very detailed and very um, uh, in, in depth. Everything has a very precise meaning, alhamdulillah. And It, it could, yes, it could. It's probably synonyms, yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, and indeed, it is the mother of the book with us, exalted and full of wisdom. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about Ummil Kitab, right? So the mother of the book. So the actual um, the Quran Majid is in Lohe Mahfuz secure from every kind of interference, every kind of, every kind of crookedness or any kind of interference. Uh, and naturally this book, which is in Lohe Mehfuz, uh, was uh, slowly revealed to Rasul Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the course of 23 years, right? And, but the original book is over there, uh, protected by the angels. Ayat number five, then should we take away the reminder from you regarding you because you are a transgressing people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could easily stop this revelation from coming. There were such disobedient people that Allah could have said, you know, you, don't, you people are careless people. I don't need to send you this revelation, but Allah is merciful and kind. Allah is gracious. Allah is generous. Even with the transgressing people, even though these people were so defiant, they were treacherous and disobedient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still continued to send the message. That is why when Allah cared for the, these type of people, we should also care for people who are on the wrong path. Do we understand that? That there, you know, people say, uh, these people are so bad, I'm not going to give them the message. Sometimes people say that, right? That, That, Right? 
بٹ اللہ سبحانہ تعالیٰ نے سب سے ڈیفائنڈ لوگوں سے یہ بات کی تھی اور قرآن انہی میں ریویل کیا تھا اللہ سبحانہ تعالیٰ نے اینڈ اللہ سبحانہ تعالیٰ ہیز آلویز ریویلڈ ہز میسیج اللہ سبحانہ تعالیٰ ہیز آلویز ریویلڈ ہز میسیجز ان دا موسٹ ڈیفائنڈ آف نیشنز وین دے گو ایبسلوٹلی اسٹرے سو اللہ سبحانہ تعالیٰ کیئرس فار ٹرانسگریسنگ پیپل شوڈ وی آلسو کیئر فار ایوری ون ایون دو دے آر ٹرانسگریسنگ ایون دو دے آر بیڈ وی شوڈ کیئر فار دیم بیکاز وی نیور نو Through us, maybe Allah will open their hearts, correct? So never reject anybody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayat number five, then should we take away the reminder from you, disregarding you because you are transgressing people? Should we stop sending this revelation? Allah is asking. But does Allah stop sending the revelation? No, He does not. This is the mercy of Allah. This is the graciousness of Allah. Alhamdulillah, this is the generosity of Allah. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, right? And how many a prophet we sent among a former people. So the work carries on. Allah carries on his work through all the messengers, correct? And there would not come to them a prophet, but they used to mock at him. And we destroyed, and we destroyed those who were stronger than them in power at the end has passed on them an example of the former people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to the Quraysh and he says, You know, many stronger nations were destroyed before you. You are nothing, you are not something uh, so great. Uh, you should learn from the previous nations. I have number eight. And we destroyed those who were stronger than them in power and has passed on the example of the former people. And if you were to ask them who created the heavens and the earth, they will surely say, Allah Almighty, All-Knower created them. The one who made for you the earth a bed and made for you roads therein so that you may be guided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the earth is like a bed, a place where we can be secure. You know, you find, how are you, uh, in bed you rest also, you feel secure whenever you want to you rest. Uh, usually when people want to be in comfort, they think of their bed. Isn't that true? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the earth is like a bed. You're comfortable here. Allah has given you everything here, correct? But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says that there are roads in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made pathways for us, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says therein you, that you may be guided. And the one who sends down water from the sky in due measure and we revive the dead land with it, thus you will be brought forth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us water, He's given us rain and Cultivation and plantation occurs because of water that Allah sends. And if Allah didn't send this water, what would happen? Ayat number 12, Alhamdulillah. And the one who created all the pairs and made for you on the ships and the cattle on which you ride. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about all the gifts He's given us. He's given us cattle, He's given us ships, correct? And in ayat number 13, that you may sit firmly on their backs, then remember the favor of your Lord when you sit firmly upon them. Glory be to him who subjected this to us and we were not capable of subduing it. Who knows the travel prayer? It's right here. Okay. We're just going to see there's no signal. Um, where is Sana? Okay, can you just put this on? So, Alhamdulillah, we see in ayat number 13 of Surah Al-Zukhruf, what do we see? We see a beautiful dua that almost everybody here knows. How many, raise your hands, how many know you, uh, know the, how many, okay. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, so let's memorize this dua because uh, there, is a, there is something that Allah is trying to bring our notice to here. What is the notice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know that we are the only creature on earth. Human beings, humanity is the only creature on earth that actually can subjugate things. Do uh, cows ride horses? Do chickens ride uh, elephants? Do uh, roosters sit in cars? No. Only human beings, only human beings can come 
on top of something else and ride it and subjugate it, make it subservient, make it work for them. And only with the power of Allah did ha this happens, correct? Have you ever thought of that? Sara? Yeah? We are the only ones, human beings are the only ones that have vehicles, have ways of transportation, have ways of conveyance. Do we see a cat going in a, on a motorcycle sometimes? Anybody seen a cat on a motorcycle? Have you seen a cat on a motorcycle? No. The, the intelligence that Allah has given humanity, He's given no one else, correct? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you may sit firmly on their backs, then remember the favor of your Lord, then you sit firmly upon them and say, glory be to him who subjugated this to us and we were not capable of subduing it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us uh, 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this capability. Who should we thank when we sit in a car? Who should we thank when we sit on the bus? Who should we thank when we sit on, on the railroad, on a ship, uh, in an aircraft, on, uh, uh, ho uh, on a horse, on a camel, on an elephant? Who should we thank? Okay, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. So the dua here is Subhana Lazi Saharalana Haza Wama Kunna Lahul Mukranina Wa Inna Ila Rabbina Lamun Kalibun. Yes. And indeed, we will surely return to our Lord. Then in this same dua, we say that we will surely return to our Lord. But they attribute to him from his slaves a portion. This is from yesterday. Ayat number 15. Ayat number 14. And indeed, we will surely run, return to our Lord. But they attribute to him from his slaves a portion. Indeed, Man is clearly ungrateful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying so many, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning so many things that he gave us. Various things are being mentioned in previous ayats and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says even with all this, man is in ungrateful. Various forms of gifts that Allah has given but we have no gratitude for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very, very sad. Uh, at number 16, or has he taken daughters out of what he has created and he has chosen sons for you? The Mushrikeen used to say that the angels are daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is refuting that. He's saying that is not true. For yourself, you want sons and for Allah, you want daughters. And when one of them is given good news of birth of that which he sets up as likeness for the most gracious, uh, example a daughter his face becomes dark and he's filled with grief so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that uh, the people of uh, in Arabia used to get very upset when you used to have a daughter and their faces used to darken they used to think you know they were they used to be very uh, there used to be a lot of warriors a lot of fights and everything and they used to think that if a daughter is born she will never be able to fight for our tribe number one number two they used to think that daughters are, uh, you know, some, they don't earn and all that. So they used to think daughters as a liability. And many, uh, a few of the tribes of Arabia used to bury their daughters alive, as you know. And, uh, you know, and they used to get very upset at the birth of a daughter. Ayat number 18, then is one who is brought up in ornaments, daughter, and, and he, father, is not cleared in, dis in dispute about what to do with his daughter, to keep her or, or bury her. So in ayat number 19, we see, and they made the angels who are themselves the slaves of the gracious, most gracious females. Did they witness the creation? Their treasure, their testimony will be recorded and they will be questioned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, why is it that the Makkans, the Quraysh, 
the people of Mecca think that angels are females? Have they n witnessed their creation? How can they give them a gender? G angels don't have a gender. Well, how have they, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is questioning uh, that is, uh, did they see the creation of the angels? How can they say this? Ayat number 20, and they say, if the most gracious had willed, we would not have worshipped them. They do not have any knowledge about what the, about that. They do nothing but lie. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that these people used to say that we do wrong things because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed it. They're blaming Allah. Anything wrong they do, they say we're only doing wrong because Allah is allowing us to do it. And uh, this is something very, very wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a choice. And if we do wrong, we are, we are accountable for it. And if we do something good, we should be grateful to Allah that Allah gave us that opportunity to do good. Ayat number 21. Or have we given them a book before it, the Quran? So they are holding fast to it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking, have they a book before this Quran? Nay, they say, indeed we found our forefathers upon a religion and we are guided by their footsteps. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you have, I am revealing this Quran to you. What book do you have? What proof do you have that what you're saying is right? And thus we did not send before you any warner in a town except that its wealthy one said, indeed we found our forefathers upon the, upon the religion and we are followers of their footsteps. He, the warner, said, even if I brought you better guidance than that on which you found your forefathers, they said, indeed, we are disbelievers in that with which you are sent. So uh, uh, Rasul used to try to reason with the people and he used to say, you know, what I have brought to you uh, is, is logical, is making sense, but, but why is, uh, my guidance is better than what you are doing, are you still not going to follow? Um, uh, then these people used to say that we are only going to follow what our forefathers used to do. Ayat number 25, so we took retribution from them, then see how was the end of the deniers. And when Ibrahim Islam said to his father and his people, indeed I disassociate from, the worship, from what you worship, except the one who created me and indeed he will guide me. Hazrat Ibrahim is being uh, um, mentioned here. He was a true believer in, in monotheism. He was on Tawheed. He was Hanif. And um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that he denied all the gods, all the idols that his uh, nation was preaching at that time, worshipping at that time. And he made it a lasting word among his descendants so that they may return. Nay, I gave enjoyment to these people and their forefathers until there came to them the truth and a clear messenger. And when the truth came to them, they said, this is magic and indeed we are disbelievers in it. So the people of Mecca, when the mess, they, they used to say that if a messenger comes, we will believe in it, him. But when he came, they, used, they said, this is not a messenger, this is magic. And they say, why was the Quran not sent down to a great man from the two towns? So um, these people used to say that uh, Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born an orphan. He, was, he, he doesn't have any wealth. And uh, why was he chosen? Why was he chosen? Why wasn't someone else chosen? Ayat number 32. Do they dispute the mercy of your Lord? We distribute among them their livelihood in, in the life of this world. And we raise some of above others in degrees so that some of them may take others of for service but the mercy of your lord is better than what they accumulate so uh, 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 the objection of the norm believers uh, is here uh, uh, as to why rasul kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam was chosen uh, so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala naturally chooses whoever he wills it's not going to be according to who they want right and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is mentioning something very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that do they distribute the mercy of uh, do they distribute the mercy of your Lord? We distribute among their livelihood in this life of this world. And we raise some above the others in degree so that some of them may take others for service. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning here that in life there are some people who are 
who have more than others. Some people, some people are leaders. Some people are followers. Some somebody can be a boss. Somebody can be an employee. Somebody can have a home, and somebody else uh, can have a rented place. Somebody can be working for you or the other. There are degrees in humanity also, because this is the way Allah runs the world. Some people work for other people, correct? And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "This is the way they interact with each other." If we, if we were self-sufficient, if we didn't need anybody, if nobody worked for somebody else, then we would have become very uh, self-centered and self-conceited. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has made a system in this world. We have staff working at our house, right? We have and and we have uh, owners of companies. We have owners of uh, big factories, and there are many, many employees in there. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has a system, ranks of people. So we need each other. This is the way we interact with each other. If everyone was self-sufficient, then um, nobody would be talking to anybody. Everyone would say, "I don't need anybody." So this is the way Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has put things in this world. This is how the world works, and so it is that. Uh, Allah chooses His prophets. Allah chooses His messengers, and this is how Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It is His choice how He runs the world. This is His wisdom. Ayat number thirty-three. And if it were not that mankind would become one community, we would have made for those who disbelieve in the Most Gracious for their houses roofs of silver and stairways of silver upon which they mount and. For their houses, doors, and couches of silver upon which they recline, and ornaments of gold, but uh, all that is nothing but enjoyment of this world, and the hereafter with your Lord is for the righteous. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying that He could have given everyone houses of silver and gold, even all the disbelievers also. But if Allah would have done that. Then everyone would have been too proud and arrogant, uh, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying that gold and silver really are baseless signs in the in 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 Allah's sight. They don't mean anything to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You see, you know, we are told from a hadith that if this world meant even as much as a mosquito's wing to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala would not have given a drop of water to the disbelievers. So. This world is distributed amongst believers and disbelievers, right? Even even the disbelievers get all the uh, things that uh, believers get. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions this in ayat number 34, 33, 34, and 35 of Surah Zukhruf. So what is the name of this surah? And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about the ornaments here. Yes, and Alhamdulillah, we see that. In, in Tafsir Asanul Bayan, we see that this is he would make some things of silver and some other things of gold. This variation would add to beauty. The meaning of the verses is that the riches of the world have no value in the sight of Lord. Were it not for the fact that all the people would become lovers of the world, he would give an abundance of wealth to every disbeliever. In fact. The riches of the world are insignificant and paltry. The hadith makes it clear: if the world equaled the wing of a mosquito in the sight of Allah, He would not give to the disbeliever one sip of water from it. This is in Tirmizi and Sunan Ibn Majah. Okay, let's go forward. Ayat number thirty-six. And whoever turns away from the remembrance of the Most Gracious, we appoint for him a devil. Then he becomes his companion. So the further you get away from Allah, the further anybody gets away from Allah, the closer one gets to Shaitan. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in ayat number 36 of Surah Zukhruf, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that if you forget to remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, if you do not connect with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala Appoints a devil as a companion to that person. Ayat number thirty-seven. And indeed, they, the evil ones, turn them away from the path, but they think they are rightly guided. Until one comes to us, he says, 
oh, would that between me and between you were the distance of the east and the west, how wretched is the companion. So later on, in the hereafter, people are going to wish that they didn't have this companion, correct? And they would want a distance from uh, the compa uh, this uh, evil companion. Ayat number 39. And it will never benefit you that day when you have wronged that you will be sharing the punishment. Then can you cause the deaf to hear or guide the blind and he who is in a clear error? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you cannot guide the spiritually blind and deaf. And even if we take you away, then indeed we will take retribution from them. Or if we show you uh, that which we have promised them, then indeed we have full power over them. So hold fast to that which is revealed to you. Indeed, you are on the straight path. Hold fast to the Quran, Majid. You are on the straight path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is consoling us all. And, and indeed, in it is a reminder for you and your people. And soon you will be questioned. So it is an honor to be the servant of this book. It's an honor to be the servant of Allah. It's an honor to have this book amongst us. Ayat number 45, and ask those of our messengers who we sent before you. Did we appoint gods to be worshiped besides the most gracious? And certainly we sent Musa with our signs to Firon and his chiefs. And he said, indeed, I am a messenger of the Lord of the worlds. But when he came to them with our signs, behold, they laughed at them. And we did not show them a sign, but it was greater than its previous sign, its sister. And we seized them with punishment so that they may return. Hazrat Musa Islam was given nine miracles, as we know, as we read about them. But they used to laugh at him. And then when they used to come under this misery, this calamity, they used to ask him to take it away. And they used to say, we're going to follow. Uh, what you say, but then they used to, as soon as the calamity would be taken away, the punishment would be taken away, they would turn back and say that this was all magic. And ayat number 49, we see um, the English meaning is, and they said, O magician, invoke your Lord for us by what he has made cov uh, covenant with you. Indeed, we will be guided. They're calling Hazrat Musa al a magician, and they're saying, call your Lord in to take this, uh, uh, this calamity away from us. Indeed, we will be guided, and what to happen used to happen is when the punishment used to be taken away, what used to happen? They would, they would, sorry, they would go back to their uh, idol worshipping, right, and their cruelty. Ayat number 50, but when we removed the punishment from them, behold, they broke their word. And Firon proclaimed among his people, saying, O oh, my people, is not the kingdom of Egypt mine and these rivers flowing underneath me? Then do you not see? So the Firon is now uh, saying to his people, isn't Egypt mine? Don't I own Egypt? Don't I own these rivers? Aren't they uh, flowing uh, in my kingdom? So basically, uh, when people started listening to Hazrat Musa al -Islam, and Firon started losing uh, his popularity, he started saying, don't you see that Egypt is mine and all? He's trying to bring them back to, uh, so that they would think of Firon as the mightiest power. Ayat number 52, or I am not, am, or am I not better than this one who is insignificant and hardly makes himself clear? So he had this overwhelming superiority about himself, right? He, what he's saying is that Musa al-Islam is not even clearly speaking of, about his message. Um, am I not better than him? Ayat number 53. Then why are gold bracelets not placed on him or angels accompanying him? So Firon is saying, why isn't Hazrat Musa wearing gold bracelets? Why isn't any angel coming with him? Why isn't the angel talking for him? So he bluffed his people and they obeyed him. Indeed, they were defiantly disobedient people. So when they angered us, we took retribution from them and drowned them all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drowned the nation of Musa? No, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drowned the nation of Pharaoh. Yes, the um, Bani Israel escaped, right? And, uh, um, and, and uh, Firon and his people were drowned, correct? Ayat number 56, and we made a 
president and an example for the later generation. So they, uh, this, gener this, what happened to the people of Firon is, is a lesson for all to learn, right? People who are defiant, their end is bad. Ayat number 57. Ayat number 57. And when the son of Maryam is presented as an example, behold, your people laughed out loud. So, uh, you know, Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that anybody that you, anybody that you worship other than Allah is no good. So the Quraysh people laughed at that. They said, okay, you're saying that anybody that uh, is worshipped other than God is no good. What about Hazrat Isa? He's worshipped by the Christians. And they laughed and they laughed about that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, uh, you know, the tribe of Quraysh, there is, no good in, uh, there, there, there is no good in laughing at what Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. It's just that anything that you bring to the level of Allah that is not Allah, of course, is something that is shouldn't be done. Ayat number fifty-eight, and they said, "Are and they said, are our gods better, or is he? They do not present it to you except for mere argument. Nay, they are people argumentative. So they just like to dispute. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala saying for no reason at all. Ayat number fifty-nine. He Isa was not but a slave on whom we bestowed our favor and we made him an example for the children of Israel and if he and if we willed we could have made angels among you succeeding one another on the earth and indeed it is a knowledge of the hour so do not be in doubt concerning it and follow me this is the straight path ayat number 62 and let not the shaitan avert you indeed he is your clear enemy do not listen to the shaitan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he is your clear enemy. Ayat number 63. And when Isa came with clear proofs, he said, Verily, I have come to you with wisdom and to make clear to you some of that over which you defer. So fear Allah and obey me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the fact that Hazrat Isa Islam always said, Fear Allah and obey me. Follow the rules and regulations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down on me. Ayat number 64. Azad Isa al-Islam never said that he was God or the son of God. Um, and indeed, Allah is my Lord and your Lord. So worship him. This is the straight path. Who is saying this? Hazrat Isa al-Islam is saying. What is he saying? Can you read ayat number 64 from your Quran al -Ishba? Basically, what we're saying here is that, you know, when uh, the Christians claim that uh, Hazrat Isa is the son of God or God himself, three in one concept. Uh, Muslims show this ayat to the Christians. And they say our book believes in Hazrat Isa al Islam. We believe he was a prophet. We believe he, he did all the miracles that he did by Allah's mercy, with Allah's command. But this is what our book says. Indeed, Hazrat Isa al Islam himself said, indeed Allah is my Lord and your Lord, so worship him. This is the straight path. Ayat number 65. But the factions from among them differed. So woe to those who have wronged from the punishment of the painful day. Ayat number 66. Are they waiting, are they waiting except for the hour to come upon them suddenly while they do not perceive? Ayat number 67. Friends on that day will be enemies of each other except for the righteous. Ayat number 68. To whom Allah will say, O oh my slaves, no fear will be on you this day, nor will you grieve. The righteous people will not have fear or grief. Isn't that beautiful? Alhamdulillah. Ayat number 69. Being those who believed in our verses and verse submissive. Um, those people who are righteous will be given good news. Submissive. Submissive, the word submissive is here, Muslimin. The people who are going to be Muslims are the ones that are going to be given the good news. Enter paradise, you and your spices. Uh, enter paradise, you and your spouses delighted. So, um, Alhamdulillah, Inshallah, we want our families to go with us. Correct? Ayat number seventy-one. Plates and cups of gold will be circulated. Again, gold is being mentioned. What is the name of this surah? So, yes, so Zuhruf, right? Plates and cups of gold will be circulated amongst them. 
and therein is whatever souls desire and whatever delights the eyes and you will abide therein forever what is being mentioned here what are we talking about this world no, jannah. jannah right right okay um so you will abide in it forever ayat number 72 and this is the paradise which you are made to inherit for what you used to do allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as telling us that this is what you get for what you used to do but, but uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, we are we are told in rasul karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam's hadith is that that no one can enter jannah unless allah's mercy is with them their deeds are not enough somebody asked uh, rasul karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam not even you Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa said, not even me, even I cannot enter Jannah unless and until Allah's mercy is with me. Inshallah ta'ala may Allah's mercy with, be with all of us. Ameen. Ayat number 73. For you therein are fruits in abundance from which you eat. Indeed the criminals will be in the punishment of hell abiding forever. It will be, it will not be, sorry, it will not subside for them and they, they therein will despair. And we did not wrong them, but they themselves were wronged. Ayat number 77. And they will call, O Malik, let your Lord put an end to us. He will say, indeed, you will remain therein. So Malik is the, um, the, the, the uh, gatekeeper of hell. The gatekeeper of hell's name is Malik. And the people of hell are asking this uh, uh, gatekeeper, uh, can we can Allah finish us can Allah put death on us this is too difficult this torture this torment but what will his answer be he will say indeed you will remain therein certainly we have brought you truth but most of you are averse to the truth 79 or have they determined some affair that indeed we are also determining ayat number 80 or do you think that we cannot hear their secret and private counsels nay our messengers the angels are with them recording it so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning in ayat number 80 that people sometimes have secret meetings um, and secret conversations uh, which are against Islam and against uh, you know the goodness and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do you think we cannot hear them you actually have angels that are recording them right ayat number 81 say if the most gracious had a son then I would be the first of the worshippers. Uh, Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying that if Allah subhanahu wa taala had a son, who would be the first to worship him? He himself. Glory be to Lord of the heavens and the earth, the Lord of the throne above what they ascribe to him. So, uh, Subhana Rabbi, uh, Subhana Rabbi Samawati wal Ard, Rabbil Arshil. Amma Yasifun. So, and uh, glory be to the Lord of the heavens and the earth, the Lord of the throne above what they ascribe to him. So leave them to converse vainly and play at, until they meet the day which they are promised. And it is he, Allah, who is the God in the heaven and the God on earth. And he is all wise, all knower. Ayat number 85, and blessed is he to whom belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth and whatever is between both of them and with him is the knowledge of the hour and to him you will be returned. Ayat number 86, and those whom they invoke besides him do not have the power of intercession except those who testifies to the truth and they know. So intercession is something that only will be permitted, will only happen by the permission of Allah, right? Ayat number 87, and if you ask them who created them, they will certainly say Allah, then how are they deluded? And Allah acknowledges his saying of my Lord, indeed there are people who do not believe. So turn away from them and say peace, but soon they will know. This is the completion of Surah Zukhruf. Inshallah ta'ala we begin a new surah, Surah Dukhan. Dukhan means the smoke. This is one of the signs uh, before Qiyamah. Uh, smoke is going to be uh, all over the world at that time. Can we hear the tilawat of Surah Dukhan please?
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حامين والكتاب المبين إنا أنزلناه في ليلة مباركة إنا كنا منذرين فيها يفرق كل أمر حكيم أمرا من عندنا إنا كنا مرسلين رحمة من ربك إنه هو السميع العليم رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما إن كنتم موطنين لا إله إلا هو يحيي ويميت ربكم ورب وآبائكم الأولين بل هم في شك يلعبون فارتقب يوم تأتي السماء بدخان مبين يغشى الناس هذا عذاب أليم. So this is uh, surah number 44, and it's a Makkan surah. It has three rukus, and it has 59 ayats. The sequence of revelation is uh, 64. Yes. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful ha mean by the clear book again the clear book right alhamdulillah Allah swears by the clear book uh, indeed we revealed it in a blessed night indeed we are ever warning mankind so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here mentions Laylatul Qadr Laylatul Qadr these are the days of Ramadan and alhamdulillah we are Lalitul Qadr can be any any uh, any day uh, the odd nights as we know 21st 23rd 25th 27th Lalitul Qadr last 10 nights of Ramadan countless blessings come upon that revelation began that day either revelation to Rasul Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam was given on that day Alhamdulillah, the first revelation, Iqra, and also some commentators say that the the Quran was re, re, uh, ta taken, was revealed from the seventh heaven to the first heaven this day also. So, um, so we see, indeed, we revealed it in a blessed night. Indeed, we are ever warning mankind. Therein, every wise affair is made distinct. Every wise affair is made distinct. So. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, the fact that this night, uh, everybody is, um, everybody's destiny, what is going to happen within this year is mentioned and uh, these, the angels get, you know, all this was written much before even humanity was made, we all know that. But the angels get the uh, messages from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is going to happen with this person this year, the blessings that, that he's going to have. If, if this person is going to get married or not, if this person is going to have a child or not, what is going to happen in his, in his life. So this is all determined on this night, uh, these, this the night of decree. Therein, every wise of affair is made distinct. Command from us, indeed, we are ever sending messages. And mercy from your Lord, indeed, he is all here, the all knower. Alhamdulillah, Lord of the heavens and the earth and whatever is between uh, both of them, if you have faith with certainty, there is no God but Him. He gives life and causes death and your Lord and the Lord of your forefathers. Nay, they play about in doubt. Then watch for the day when the sky will bring visible smoke 
Okay, here's the word smoke. Can you see that in your ayat number 10? Can you see that in your Quran? Can you read ayat number 10? So we began this Surah Dukhan and the first thing that was mentioned was Lalatul Qadr, right? So Lalatul Mubarakah who is being mentioned here. Uh, refers to Lalatul Qadr because Allah says in verse 1 of Al Qadr, verily we have sent it down in the night of Qadr. This night occurs in the month of Ramadan because Allah says in verse 185 of Surah Al Baqarah, the month of Ramadan in which was revealed the Quran. This night falls on one night of odd number during the last 10 nights of Ramadan. This is in Sahih Bukhari. Here in this surah, the night of decree or the night of power has been called the blessed night because firstly, Quran was revealed in that night. Secondly, Archangel Jibreel uh, and other angels descend on this night. Thirdly, all matters relating to the following year are decreed on this night as following verses say. Fourthly, devotional worship during this night equals that of 1,000 nights, which is 83 years and four months. That Quran was revealed the first time on the night of power on the blessed night means that it began to be revealed to Allah's messenger, peace be on him, on the night or it means that Quran was brought down, the whole of it, from guarded tablet, Baitul Izza, uh, which is located on the firmament of the world, whence it was revealed to Allah's messenger in the course of 23 years in fragments and at different times as the need of the hour warranted. Some take the blessed night to refer to the 15th night of Shaban, popularly known as Lalatul Bara, but this is wrong because it conflicts with the textual evidence of Quran which says that it was revealed in Lalatul Qadr. Moreover, all the hadiths which say that the 15th night of Shaban is the night of decree is a weak, are weak hadiths. The purpose of revealing the Quran is to warn mankind of the doom which is destined for those who refuse to surrender to Allah. Okay, so here is, uh, now we are up to ayat number 10. And ayat number 10 we were seeing about the smoke, right? So this is some type of a, a smoke that is going to occur at, just uh, before Qayyama. And, um, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it here and the name of the surah is also that, correct? Ayat number 11, enveloping the people, this will be a painful punishment. They will say, our Lord, remove from us the punishment. Indeed, we are believers. How can there be for them a reminder when verily had come to them a messenger making clear the truth? Then they turned away from him and said, one taught by others, a madman. Indeed, we will remove the punishment a little. Indeed, you will return to disbelief. The day we will seize with the greatest seizure. Punishment, indeed, we will take retribution. And certainly we tried before them the people of Firon, and there came to them noble messengers, saying, Deliver to me the servants of Allah. Indeed, I am a trustworthy messenger to you. And do not exalt yourselves against Allah. And against Allah, indeed, I have come to you with clear authority. And indeed, I seek refuge with my Lord and your Lord, lest you stone me. But if you do not believe me, then leave me alone. So he called his Lord, saying, these are criminal people. So who are we, who is being mentioned here? Did you understand who is being spoken about here? Sorry, the disbelievers, yes, the disbelievers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says then the prophets, what happens is that then, so he called on to his Lord saying, these are criminal people. How can there be for them a reminder when they verily had come a messenger making clear truth? So when the messenger uh, gives messages and all and everything, and then eventually the messenger also says, 
uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have given all my, all the messages, I've given your revelation to these people, I have told them what to do, but these are criminal people. Then Allah said, set out with my slaves by night, indeed, you will be followed. So who is being spoken about now? Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said that these are a criminal people. Then Allah said, set out with my slaves by night, indeed you will be followed and leave the sea as it is. Indeed, they are army to be drowned. How many, so uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Hazrat Musa alayhi salam to part the sea, the sea parted, they crossed over and um, then the sea continued to be parted and Firon's army tried to take advantage of that and they went into it and the water closed on top of them and, and they all drowned. Ayat number 25, and how many gardens and springs they left behind, the corn fields and noble place, places. The pleasant things therein they used to take delight. Thus was their end, and we made it an inheritance for another people. And the heaven and the earth did not weep over them, nor were they given respite. And certainly we saved the children of Israel from the humiliating punishment. What is the humiliating punishment that they were in? The slavery. They were all slaves. Pharaoh used to keep them as slaves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayat number 30 is saying, and certainly we saved the children of Israel from the humiliating punishment. Um, uh, from Pharaoh, indeed, we, he was arrogant among the transgressors, and certainly we chose them by knowledge over the world, and we gave them signs in which there was a clear trial. And indeed, these disbelievers say there is not but our first death, and we will not be raised again. Again, the same thing that they thought they would never be resurrect, resurrected again, and bring our forefathers if you are truthful. They used to say, if you think that we are going to be resurrected, then why don't you bring our forefathers back to life? Are they better or the people of Tuba? A and those before them, we destroyed before, for indeed they were criminals. So Tuba was a title, uh, Tuba, people of Tuba is, are being mentioned here. It was a title given to the kings of Yemen. Ayat number 38, and we did not create the heavens and the earth and whatever is in between them in play. We did not create both of them, but in truth, but most of them do not know. Indeed, the day of judgment is an appointed term for all of them. The day when no relation will avail a relation in anything, nor will they be helped, except on whom Allah has mercy. Indeed, he is almighty, all merciful. Ayat number 43, indeed, the tree of Zakum will be food of the sinners, like murky oil it will boil in their bellies like boiling of scalding water it will be said seize him and drag him into the midst of hellfire then pour over his head the punishment of scalding water taste indeed you considered yourself mighty and noble indeed this is what you used to doubt indeed the righteous will be in a secure place in gardens and spring wearing garments of fine heavy fine and heavy silk facing each other thus and we will marry them to companions with beautiful eyes they will call therein for every kind of fruit secure they will not taste death therein except the first death and we and he will have protected them from the punishment of hellfire a bounty from your lord that is a great success indeed we have made it quran easy in your tongue so that you may take heed so watch indeed they too are watching so bounty from your lord that is a great success i have number 57 bounty from your lord that is a great success that is the big, biggest achievement what is the biggest achievement yes absolutely okay inshallah we have completed alhamdulillah surah dukhan and we will con continue with the new surah, Surah al jasiya the kneeling. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, we'll try to uh, hear the tilawat. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Hameen. تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز الحكيم إن في السماوات والأرض لآيات للمؤمنين 
وفي خلقكم وما يبث من دابة آيات لقوم يوقنون واختلاف الليل والنهار وما أنزل الله من السماء من رزق فأحيا به الأرض بعد موتها وتصريف الرياح آيات لقوم يعقلون تلك آيات الله نتلوها عليك بالحق فبأي حديث بعد الله وآياته يؤمنون ويل لكل أفاك أثيم Okay, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen We will begin a new surah now by Allah's mercy We are on para 25 surah Jathia The kneeling Inshallah ta'ala As you can see here, the kneeling down, Surah Jathia. Uh, you know when you go into a tayat, when you sit in a tayat, uh, when we say the tayat in the namaz, that, that type of sitting down is called al Jathia, uh, the kneeling down. It's Surah number 45, it's a Makkan Surah, four rukus, and alhamdulillah 37 ayats. It, the sequence of revelation is it was a 65th Surah to be revealed. Um, according to some of the commentators. Inshallah ta'ala, let's hear the tilawat. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Ha-meem. As we know, these are harufi muqatat, disjointed letters, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the meaning of. And we have not been told. Neither did Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell us what they mean. Ayat, num ayat number two, the revelation of the book is from Allah, the Almighty, all wise. So the revelation of the book is from Allah, the Almighty, all wise. We are told here that this book is from Allah Almighty. People used to say that Hazrat Muhammad ﷺ has made it up himself, correct? That he's making it up or somebody's telling him or something like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear. This is a revelation. This revelation of the book is from Allah Almighty, all wise. Indeed, in the heavens and the earth, there are signs for the believers. So, signs for the believers. Anybody that believes in one God, you know, understands by looking even a, at, a, at a simple thing like a leaf, or a simple thing like a rock, or a simple thing like a grain, that there must be a creator. And then if you look at complicated things that Allah has made, I own bodies. How complicated they are. The digestive system, the circulatory system, the endocrine system, the, you know, uh, the immunity in our body, all these things, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made everything for us to ponder on, for us to contemplate. And everything after we look at it, what does it do? It should bring us to the fact that there has to be a creator. There has to be one God, one Allah Almighty who has made all this thing happen and who is making this entire universe run uh, number four and if and in your own creation and what he disperse of the moving creatures are signs for people who are certain in faith so signs are in the moving creatures also correct and and everything else do you sometimes look at birds and think how did these bird how did Allah create these birds subhanallah how they fly, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says that it is Allah that holds them up. SubhanAllah. Ayat number five. And in the alternation, alternation of the night and the day and the provision that Allah sends down from the sky and gives life thereby to the earth after its death and in this the directing of the winds are signs for people who reason. These are the verses of Allah which we recite to you in truth then in what statement after Allah and His verses will they believe? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is questioning humanity and of course jinns because this book is for jinns and humans. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking with the signs of Allah all over the universe and with this revelation of the Quran Majid, what other thing do you need 
for proof. What, do you, what else do you need for proof? Woe to every sinful liar who hears the verses of Allah, recites, uh, who hears the verses of Allah recited to him, then persists arrogantly as if he had not heard them. So give him tidings of a painful punishment. People who turn away from this message, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, give them painful punishment. Ayat number nine, and when he knows anything of our verses, he takes them in ridicule. Those will have a humiliating punishment. Ayat number 10, before them is hell. What they had earned will not avail them in anything, nor that which they had taken besides Allah as protectors. And for them is a great punishment. Ayat number 11, this is guidance. And those who disbelieve in the verses of Lord will have a painful punishment of foul nature. Ayat number 12, Allah is the one who subjected to you the sea that the ships may sail therein by his command and that you may seek his bounty and that you may give thanks. So everything in nature is working for a man. Everything working is working for man. Like everything is can be controlled by a man. Correct? Everything can be controlled by a man. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when I have given you everything, you are for me. You are supposed to follow my rules. You are supposed to follow my commandments. You are supposed to worship me and you're supposed to listen to me. Right? I have given you all these things. They're all under you. But you are supposed to be in the limits of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put you in. So we are not supposed to cross boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayat number 13. And he has subjugated to you whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on earth. All from him. Indeed, in that are signs for people who give thought. Ayat number 14. Say to those who believe to forgive those who do not hope for the days of Allah. So that he may recompense the people for what they used to earn. Whoever does Allah, whoever does a righteous deed, then it is for himself. And whoever does an evil deed, then it is against himself. Then to your Lord you will be returned. Ayat number 16. And certainly we gave the children of Israel the book and the wisdom and the prophethood. And we provided for them uh, good things. And we preferred them over the worlds. And we gave them clear proofs of the matter of religion. And they did not defer until after knowledge came to them out of envy among themselves. Indeed, your Lord will judge between them on the day of resurrection concerning what over that which they used to defer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the fact that, you know, when Quran Majid was being revealed and when Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent, spreading the message of Islam, even though pre previously in their books there were these messages and prophecies that Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will come, they used to hide it, number one. And number two, if they recognized it, they didn't want to accept it because, not because they didn't understand the message, not because they didn't understand the message, but because they were prejudiced, they had prejudice, they were, they were jealous and they had envy. These were the reasons why they, this envy, this jealousy, this prejudice, this being biased, why, did, why was Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam chosen? These were the reasons that stopped them from accepting the truth. So envy, jealousy, and prejudice and being biased are things that stop us from seeing the truth. Ayat number 18. And we put you on an ordained way concerning the matter of religion. So follow it and do not follow the desires of those who do not know. So as you know, this, uh, this leadership was taken away from Bani Ismail, Bani Israel, to, and it was given to Bani Ismail. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came from the nation of Bani uh, Ismail and they were not happy about that. In ayat number 19, indeed they will never avail you against Allah at all and indeed the wrongdoers are allies of one another and Allah is the protector of the righteous. Isn't that beautiful? So these, these people who are uh, disbelievers, they, they, they support each other. But who supports the Muslims? Allah is the protector. Can you uh, highlight that? Ayat number 19. Allah is the protector of the righteous.
Night number 20. Uh, this is the enlightenment uh, for mankind and a guidance and a mercy for people who believe with certainty. Do those who commit evil deeds think that we will make them like those who believed and did righteous deeds? Make, make these two equal? Their life and death, evil is what you judge. And Allah created the heavens and the earth in truth and that every soul may be recompensed for what it has earned, then they will not be wronged. Ayat number 23, have you seen him who takes the desire as his God and, and Allah knowingly lets him go astray and sets a seal upon his hearing and his heart and puts over his vision a veil? Then who will guide him after Allah? Then will you not receive admonition? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that there are people in this world who take this, their desires as God. Can you read ayat number 20? This is what Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa said that I do not believe that my ummah will worship idols. But I'm scared that they will, be, they, that they will take their, desire, their desires as God. Meaning how does that happen? When our desire supersedes the desire of Allah, then we have taken our desire as our God. Well, how does that happen? That, for example, um, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to be kind to our parents. He has asked us to be kind again and again in the Quran. He asks us to be kind to our parents. But one day I just feel very angry. I'm in a bad mood. I'm in a bad mood. I just don't want anybody to talk to me and when my father or my mother comes and talks to me, I'm rude to them. Because I wanted to be rude to them, not because I didn't remember or I didn't think and I didn't want to think that my Allah doesn't want me to be rude to my parents, that Allah wants me to be kind. When I take my desire over the desire of Allah, this is shirk. We take us ourselves as gods because we want to do what we want to do. Many examples like this in this world. Allah says, do, Allah says don't take riba. Allah says pray five times a day. We don't want to pray five times a day. We don't think we should pray five times a day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, you know, fast during the month of Ramadan. I don't want to pray. I don't want to fast during the month of Ramadan because I feel too hungry. My stomach hurts. You know. So what, do, what am I doing? I'm taking my wishes, my desires, and superseding them over Allah. That makes us make our desires as gods. This is a very scary thing. This is a number one thing that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very, very scared about, that our, our Ummah will do this. And we are doing that, every one of us, in some way or the other. May Allah forgive us, may Allah guide us, may Allah protect us, may Allah not make our desires our gods. Ayat number 24, and they say there is nothing but our worldly life, we die and we live, and nothing destroys us except time. And they have no knowledge of that, they only guess. This is a typical view of an atheist, you know, where, who they, they just think that, you know, it is what we, what we believe is what is right. We don't want to hear any other, uh, uh, you know, message from anywhere else. Ayat number 25, and when our Clear verses are recited to them. Their argument is only that they say, bring back our forefathers if you are truthful. Say, Allah gives you life, then causes you to die. Then he will gather you on the day of resurrection, about which there is no doubt, but most of the people do not know. Ayat number 27. And to Allah belongs the dominion of the heaven and, heavens and the earth. And the day the hour is established, that day the falsifiers will lose. And you will see every nation kneeling. Every nation will be called to its record. It will be said to them, today you will be recompensed for what you used to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is painting a very vivid picture here. A picture of the hereafter when every nation will be kneeling. What is the name of the surah? Ajasya. What does that mean? Kneeling. kneeling down. Can you highlight that word Jasya here? Um, Sana, please. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Can you see it in your Quran? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that every, in humility, in humility and out of respect, 
everyone is going to be sitting as you kneel for, for atayat. How do you sit for atayat, remember? Yeah? Your knees are bent, bent and you are, your, knees, your legs are behind, you're sitting on, that's the way we're all going to be sitting. That's the way we're all going to be sitting in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. And you will see every nation kneeling. Every nation would, uh, will be called to its record. It will be said to them, today you will be recompensed for what you used to do. Can, I, I would like to hear you from your Quran also. Roha, can you read ayat number 28? This our record speaks. Uh, this our record speaks about you in truth. Indeed, we were having transcribed what you used to do. So our records will be laid open in front of us, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that all was being transcribed. All every all, our, all everything is being written about us. Ayat number thirty. Then, as for those who believed and did righteous deeds, their Lord will admit them into mercy. That is a clear success. But as for those who disbelieved, it will be said to them, Were not my verses recited to you, but you were proud and became a criminal people? And when it was said, Indeed, the promise of Allah is true. There is no doubt about it. The coming of the hour, you said, We do not know what the hour is. We only think it is an assumption, and we, were, we are not convinced. And the evil consequences of what they did will appear to them and they will be enveloped by what they used to mock. And it will be said, today we forget you as you forgot the meeting of the day of yours. And your abode is fire and for you there are no helpers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you forgot about me in this world. Now I'm not going to pay attention to you now. I'm going to forget about you. Ayat number 35, this is because you took the verses of Allah in ridicule and the life of this world deceived you so that, so that day they will not be taken out from it nor will they be asked to appease Allah. Then praise be to Allah, the Lord of the heavens and the Lord of the earth and the and Lord of the worlds. And to him belongs all grandeur in heaven and the earth. And and he is the almighty, all wise. Inshallah ta'ala, this is the completion of para number 25. We will begin para number 26, inshallah ta'ala, if Allah wants. Inshallah, let's, if we can hear the talawat of the beginning of para 26. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. حامين تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز الحكيم ما خلقنا السماوات والأرض وما بينهما إلا بالحق وأجل مسمى والذين كفروا عما أنذروا معرضون قل أرأيتم ما تدعون من دون الله أروني ماذا خلقوا من الأرض أم لهم شرك في السماوات إيتوني بكتاب من قبل هذا أو أثارة من علم إن كنتم صادقين ومن أضل ممن يدعو من دون الله من لا يستجيب له يوم القيامة وهم عن دعائهم غافلون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We begin a new surah in surah in para number 26 we begin, begin a new sorry Auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim we will begin surah al ahqaf 
which means the sand hills. Also, another meaning is the curved sand tracks, inshallah ta'ala. This is surah number 46. It's a Makkan surah. It has four rukus. It has 35, 35 ayats. In the sequence of revelation, it is the 66th surah. Surah Ahkaf. Inshallah, we'll hear the Sadaqallah azim everything Allah says is true. Haq. Alhamdulillah. Para number 26, in the name of Allah, the, the, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Surah, Surah Al-Ahqaf, ayat number one. ha Mim. the revelation of the book is from Allah, the Almighty, all-wise. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying the same thing, right? Who is the revelation from? Alhamdulillah. Previous surah also began with Al Aziz, and um, you know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says Al Aziz, Al Hakim. Two of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's name, Al Aziz and Al Hakim. Can you see that in ayat number two in your Qurans? Alhamdulillah. Okay, uh, ayat number three. We did not create the heavens and the earth and what is between them except in truth and for an appointed term. But those who disbelieve turn away from what they are warned of. Say, have you considered what you call besides Allah? Show me what they have created of the earth, or have they any share in the heavens? Bring me a book before this, uh, of, or traces of knowledge, if you are truthful. So, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that if you claim like where, where is the proof? Where is the book? Where is, the, where, where is your doctrine? Where is your, you know, uh, any evidence of these gods? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you have no proof. We, the book, we have the proof. What is the proof? The Quran Majid is the proof, right? And who is more astray than he who calls besides Allah those who will not respond to him until the day of resurrection and they are unaware of their calls. And when people are gathered on the day of resurrection, they who were invoked will be enemies to them and they will be deniers of their worship. So what, you know, uh, after, uh, you know, in life what has happened, with humanity what has happened that many good people lived in this world, right? After these good people died, the people that were left behind made these people uh, something to worship of. Like, some, uh, for example, a good person passed away. After they pass away, you make a statue of that person. You make a statue of the person just for a reminder. This is how, uh, this is how shirk began. You make a statue of, of a person to remind you of that person, right? Later on, you fall so much in love with that statue that you put food in front of it. Then you uh, start bowing down to it. Then you start putting garlands on it. You put flowers in front of it. And you actually forget the person who actually it, it was an image of. And you start preaching. Yeah, so, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in ayat number uh, 5 and 6. And who is more astray than he who calls besides Allah those who will respond to him until the day of resurrection and they are unaware of their calls and when people are gathered on the day of resurrection they who were invoked will be enemies to them and they will be deniers of their worship so these people don't know what happened to the people that were left behind they don't know that they were being worshipped so in the day of judgment these people who were being worshipped will say you know when we lived in the world, we were just good people. We didn't want anybody to worship. We didn't know that when we'll die, they'll make a statue of us and they're going to start worshiping us. They will, these are the people that are being mentioned. That when, and when the people are gathered on the day of resurrection, they who were invoked will be enemies of, the, of them. They will be deniers of their worship. They will say, we didn't know about their worshiping us. We never wanted them to worship us. Ayat number seven, and when our clear verses are recited to them those who disbelieve say about the truth when it comes to them this is a clear magic or they say he has invented nay say if i support me against allah he knows the best what you utter concerning it 
He is sufficient as a witness between me and you. And he is the oft forgiving, the most merciful. Two of Allah's beautiful names, alhamdulillah, are being mentioned here. al ghafur Ar-Rahim. And ayat number nine, say, I am not the first of the messengers, nor do I know what will be done with me or with you. I only follow that which is revealed to me, and I am but a clear warner. So the non-believers of Makkah, uh, always wanted Rasul Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to show some superpowers, right? Supernatural powers. Allah uh, Subhanahu Wa Taala is asking Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say that he's only a human being, just like anybody else, and he doesn't know the future. Uh, he only gives the revelations, the message of the revelation, as and how Allah commands him to. Uh, ayat number ten. Say, have you considered if it is your from Allah that you disbelieve in it and a witness from among the children of Israel testifies to the like thereof, then he believed while you were arrogant. What will be your plight? Indeed, Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. And those who disbelieve say to those who believe, if it had been good, they would not have preceded us in believing it. And when they are not guided by it, they say this is an ancient lie. So, uh, you know, people who didn't believe in the messages, they tried to confuse the weak-minded Muslims to go back to the, the idol worshipping and all that. Ayat number 12, and, and before it was the scripture of Musa as guide, as a mercy, and this book confirms it. It is revealed in Arabic language to warn those who do, do wrong and glad tidings for the good doers. Ayat number 13, indeed those who say, our Lord is Allah, then remain firm. Then they will have no fear, nor will they grieve. True slaves of Allah, true slaves of Allah, don't have to worry. Ayat number 14, those are the companions of paradise, abiding forever therein, a reward for what they used to do. Ayat number 15, and we have enjoined to man kindness to his parents. His mother carried him with hardship and gave him birth gave birth to him with hardship and the bearing of him and the weaning of him is 30 months until when he reaches his maturity and reaches 40 years he says my lord grant me power that i may be grateful for your favor which you have bestowed on me and and upon my parents and that i may do righteous deeds which you which please you and make my offspring righteous indeed i turn to you and indeed i am of those who submit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the fact that we have to be kind to our parents and that the mother carries the child and how the mother weans the child, how the mother nurses the child and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that child when that child reaches the age of 40 he can say a dua like this. This is the dua to be said. And this is the dua to be said. Rabbi auzaini an ashkuraka Jannah. So, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this beautiful dua that uh, somebody who reaches maturity should say, which means, my Lord, grant me, grant me power and uh, that I may be grateful to your favor which you have bestowed upon me and my parents and that I do righteous deeds which please you and make me righteous for, for um, and my offspring. Indeed, I turn to you, and indeed, I am of those who submit. Those are the ones we will accept from them the best of what they did. And overlook, we will overlook from them their evil, evil deeds among the companions of paradise, and a promise true which they were promised. In, uh, so, alhamdulillah, this is a beautiful dua. Please highlight this dua in the Quran and memorize it. Um, Sarah, can you say this dua to us with beautiful tajweed?
and warners had already passed away before him and after him saying worship none but Allah indeed I fear for you the punishment of the mighty day so here's the word Al-Ahqaf right the, what is the name of the surah Al-Ahqaf right so uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that this is the place where Hazrat Hud al-Islam came right and this territory is spread from Oman to Yemen uh, uh, this is the southern western part of Arabia that we're talking about and mention the uh, mention the br- brother of Ad when he warned his people in ah- Al-Ahqaf the, the curved sand tracks and warners had already passed away before him and after him saying worship none but Allah indeed I fear uh, for uh, your, the punishment of a mighty day and they said have you come to us to turn us away from our guards then bring upon us um, what you threaten us with if you are truthful he said the knowledge is only with Allah and I convey to you that which I am sent but I see that you are an ignorant people then when they saw it a cloud approaching their valley uh, their valleys they said this is a cloud bringing us rain nay it is that which you were asking to be hastened a wind in which is a painful punishment so they used to these people used to say bring bring the punishment quickly bring the punishment on us if you are truthful and finally when Allah did bring the punishment they thought it was something good coming because they saw a big cloud but actually this cloud was going to bring very very dreadful rain a tor- this was a torment fierce winds came with the with the cloud and uh, as we are told for so eight days and seven nights this these winds blew and uh, they destroyed everything all the people they destroyed and um, destroying everything by the command of their Lord then they became such that nothing could be seen except their dwellings their dwellings are still there we can still see the <coughs> the carving in the mountains uh, the, the buildings are still there for future generations to see they are destroyed and those people are gone I number 26 and certainly we had established them in what we have not established you and we made for them hearing and vision and hearts but their hearing vision and hearts did not avail them at all from the punishment when they went rejecting our signs of Allah and they were enveloped in what they used to ridicule they used to make fun of this punishment that was going to come to them their senses did not avail them they uh, were absolutely uh, finished and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you know they were stronger than you who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to the people of Quraysh Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa was told to tell the people of Quraysh that they were nations that were stronger than you they were destroyed they dominated larger areas they were much more in command they were destroyed you can also be destroyed I number 27 and certainly we destroyed the towns that, sur- that surround you and we have diversified the sign that they may return so all around this place of Hejaz all around this place of Mecca are nations that were destroyed close by them even now when you can go around those places and see these the the remnants of these nations ayat number 28 then why did those whom they had taken as gods besides Allah as a way of approach to him not help them nay but they were lost from them and that was their falsehood and what they were inventing now something very beautiful comes up alhamdulillah a new a different kind of a incidents in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ayat number 29 and when we directed you to a party of jinn listening to the Quran when they attended it they said listen quietly and then when it was concluded they went back to their people as warners so um, Rasul Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is said was saying his morning prayer in an area uh, uh, um, by the name of Uqaz in the morning and even when he was coming back from Taif and when he was uh, saying this prayer he was reciting the Quran and assembly of jinns a group of jinns was listening to Rasul Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam and these jinns they listened to it they they were so amazed by this kalam they went back to their nation and they they preached this and they said you know uh, you know there's this beautiful kalam 
and uh, Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was reciting it and they all became believers. Ayat number 30, they, they, they said, our people, indeed we have heard a book revealed after Musa confirming what was before it, guiding to the straight path. So the jinns knew of the previous book. The jinns knew of Hazrat Musa Alayhi Salaam and Alhamdulillah and Jeel. And uh, they, uh, the, uh, they, they basically, the Torah, sorry, they knew about the Torah and they knew they were informed and they said that we have believed in that much, now we're going to believe in the further revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they uh, became Muslims. So Alhamdulillah, as we know, jinns are good jinns and bad jinns. Alhamdulillah, here the, all the jinns are now becoming Muslims. And they said, our people, indeed we have heard a book revealed after Musa confirming what was before it, indeed to the truth and the straight path. O oh, our people, respond to the one who invites to Allah and believes in him. He will forgive you of your sins and protect you from the painful punishment. And whoever does not respond to the one who calls to Allah, then he cannot escape on the earth and he will not have protectors besides him, those in clear error. Ayat number 33, do they not see that Allah, the one who created the heavens and the earth and, and was not tired by their creation is able to give life to the dead? Yes, indeed, he has power over everything. وَإِذْ صَرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفَرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنِ نَفَرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنَ فَلَمَّا حَضَرُوهُ قَالُوا أَنصِتُوا فَلَمْ tired, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do they not see that Allah is the one who created the heavens and the earth and was not tired by their creation? Is able to give life to the dead? Yes, indeed. He has power over everything. Ayat number 34. 
and the day those who disbelieved are exposed to the fire, it will be said to them, Is this not the truth? They will say, Yes, by, your, by, by our Lord. He will say, Then taste the punishment because you used to disbelieve. Ayat number 35. So be patient, as had patience those of determination among the messengers, and do not seek to hasten them the punishment. The day they see what they were promised, it will seem to them as if they had not remained in the world except an hour of the day. A notification, but will any be destroyed except the defiantly disobedience? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that this is a very temporary life, everything is going to finish and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that we are going to think that we remained here for just an hour. All our lives, whether we live to be 60 years old or 70 or 80 or 90, we are going to think that we lived here for a very short time. We have completed, alhamdulillah, by Allah's mercy, Surah Al-Kaf. The curved sand tracks, and we are going to begin a new surah, surah, surah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Also, another name for the surah Muhammad is surah Qital. But here we are written in this um, surah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam surah. This is surah number forty-seven. It's a madni surah. It has four rukus. It has thirty-eight ayats. Thirty-eight ayats. Inshallah, let's hear the tilawat. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين كفروا وصدوا عن سبيل الله أضل أعمالهم والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وآمنوا بما نزل على محمد وهو الحق من ربهم كفر عنهم سيئاتهم وأصلح بالهم ذلك بأن الذين كفروا اتبعوا الباطل وأن الذين آمنوا اتبعوا الحق من ربهم كذلك يضرب الله للناس أمثالهم فإذا لقيتم الذين كفروا فضرب الرقاب حتى إذا أثخنتموهم فشدوا الوثاق فإما من بعد وإما فداء حتى تضع الحرب أوزارها ذلك وَلَوْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهُ لَانْتَصَرَ مِنْهُمْ وَلَكِنْ لِيَبْلُوَ بَعْضَكُمْ بِبَعْضٍ وَالَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَلَنْ يُضِلَّ أَعْمَالَهُمْ سَيَهْدِيهِمْ وَيُصْلِحُ بَالَهُمْ صدق الله مزيم الحمد لله رب العالمين Allah's beautiful kalam is absolutely true, it's haq. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Surah Muhammad. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Those who believe and turn away people from the way of Allah, He will make their deeds worthless. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically mentioning people who stop other people from accepting Islam. So, uh, you know, the custodians of the Kaaba at that time were non-believers. They, had, they were generous and they had, their hospitality was uh, very good hospitality. But Allah says, even if your hospitality is good, even if you're generous, but you're stopping other people from accepting Islam, then, you know, they, you, your deeds will be worthless. People from the way of Allah, he will make their deeds worthless. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically mentioning people who stop other people from accepting Islam. So uh, ayat number two, and those who believe and do righteous deeds and believe in what is revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and it is the truth from their Lord, he will remove from them their misdeeds and improve their condition. 
that is because those who disbelieve follow falsehood while those who believe follow the truth and their lord thus allah presents to people similitudes so one party is on falsehood and the other party is in, on obedience can uh, and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the people who are uh, obeying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala their condition will be improved ayat number 4 so when you meet those who disbelieve in the battle so when you meet those who disbelieve in the battle and strike their necks until when you have subdued them then bind a bond firmly on them take them as captives and afterwards either confirm a favor or ransom them until the war lays down its burdens that you are ordered and if allah had willed surely he could have taken retribution from them but he ordered armed struggle to test some of you by means of others and those who are killed in the way of allah he will never let their deeds become worthless so as you know uh, there was a time when allah when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want rasul kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam to be uh, to 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 go into jihad there was a time when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said pass the message of islam in a very peaceful way but when the hostilities became tough and people wanted to attack the muslims then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives this message that because the muslims are being tortured now so this command is only for the battlefield only for the battlefield it is not generally when you meet a non believer that you do all these things this is in the battlefield and um and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning all these things for that time so naturally the muslims had to defend themselves right and here we see in ayat number 4 that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them that if you are going if you going to fight them then fight them properly and you have to uh, eliminate them and if you take captives then the captives uh, can continue be, to be your captives or you can ransom them right inshallah taala so that is what i'll just find the little bit of uh, writing on this in asnul bayan surah muhammad ayat number 4 Okay. Ayat number 5. He will guide them and improve their condition and admit them to paradise which he has made known to them. Or oh, you who believe, if you help Allah, he will help you and make firm your feet. So Allah helping Allah is helping his deen, helping his deen, helping to spread Islam, right? Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you help spread Islam, then what will Allah do? <coughs> What will we do? Can you read ayat number seven? Ayat number eight. But those who disbelieve, for them is destruction, and he will make their deeds worthless. If there is no iman, then the deeds don't carry any weight. Ayat number nine. That is because they. hate what allah has revealed so he has made their deeds worthless so this they used to hate the quran you know they didn't want to listen to the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says anybody who hates the messages of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes their deeds worthless ayat number 10 have they not traveled in the earth and seen how was the end of those before them allah destroyed them and for the disbeliever awaits its likeness that is because allah is the protector of those who believe and because the disbelievers have no protectors so who is the believe who is the protector of the one who believes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah supports allah supports those people who believe indeed <coughs> indeed allah will admit those who believe to and do righteous deeds to gardens underneath which rivers flow but those who disbelieve enjoin themselves and eat as enjoy themselves and eat the ca- eat cattle and the fire will be their abode so so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that you can enjoy what you want in this world but if you are not going to if you're going to reject the signs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then fire will be the abode of those people and how many a town was stronger than our, your town which drove you out we destroyed them so there was no helper for them then is he who is on clear proof from his lord like him 
to whom the evil of the deeds is made attractive while they follow their own desires. A parable of paradise which is promised to the righteous therein are rivers, unpolluted water, and rivers of milk whose taste does not change, and rivers of wine delicious for those who drink, and rivers of pure and clear honey. For them there are all kinds of fruits and forgiveness from their Lord. Are these righteous people like those who will abide in fire forever and given to them drinking drink of boiling water and that cuts their intestines into pieces? مثل الجنة التي وعد المتقون فيها أنهار من ماء غير آسر وأنهار من لبن لم يتغير طعمه وأنهار Allah is making a contrast here. Two different kinds of people. People who, are, who have true spirit of Islam. People uh, who have nur of Islam in their hearts. Who are slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And people who are defiant and disobedient. And who uh, are, are, you know, who do, who reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's signs. Uh, what are the beautiful things that one is going to get in Jannah? Can you read ayat number 15? Right. So there's a, there's a comparison between the good people, people on Iman, and the people, what is going to happen to the people who don't have Iman, who reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's signs, who are criminals and sinners in this world. A very big difference, correct? Let's go forward to ayat number 16. Yes, and among them are those who listen to you until when they depart from you, they say to those who were given knowledge, what was he, what was, what has he just said to us now? Those are the upon whom, whose hearts Allah has set a seal and they follow their own desires. So these people used to sit in the gatherings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They used to listen and then when you, they used to leave, they used to mock the messages of Islam and they used to make fun and they used to say, what did he just say? We don't understand what he just said. Same people sitting in the same assembly, good people, bad people, hypocrites, all kinds of people, same message, but the same message is going differently into different hearts. It's all about how pure the heart is to receive the message of Allah. Ayat number 17, and those who accept guidance, he increases them in guidance and gives them their righteousness. So if one wants to follow the right path, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps opening the path and keeps continuously bringing you towards him. Ayat number 18, and then do they wait for the hour that it should come to them suddenly, but indeed its indications have come, then how beneficial can it be to them when their reminder has come to them? So know that there is no God but Allah. Ask forgiveness for your sin and for the believing men and believing women and Allah knows about your movement and your resting places. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, look for evidence of Allah. Yeah? Look for evidence of La ilaha illallah. Alhamdulillah. And those who believe say, 
why has a surah not been revealed but when a precise surah is revealed and fighting is mentioned therein you see those in whose hearts is a disease looking at you with look of a faint of one fainting from death but more appropriate for them uh Allah is mentioning that these people used to say that whenever Islam needs us, whenever we have to fight, we will fight in Allah's way. But when the actual commandment came, remember the commandment has just come, we read when Surah Muhammad began, that now they can fight, now they can go into jihad. When the commandment actually came for jihad, they withdrew. So the hypocrites were exposed at this time. Ayat number 21. is obedience and a kind word and when the matter of the fighting was determined if they had been true to allah surely it would have been better for them so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that don't be impressed by their words because their actions are not uh in accordance to their words ayat number 22 then would you perhaps if you are given authority cause corruption in the earth and cut off your ties of kingship those are they whom allah has cursed so he has made them deaf and blinded their vision as you know uh, battle of badr the muslims won the battle and battle of uhud they faced a lot of opposition and uh, and did not follow the the commandments of uh rasul karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam and laws so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is this is the background of these ayats ayat number 23 those are they whom allah has cursed so he has made them deaf and blinded their vision because at the time when they were supposed to sacrifice themselves and go into jihad what did they do they ran away then do they not ponder over the quran or are there locks upon their hearts indeed those who return to their indeed though indeed those who return on their backs after guidance has come become clear to them shaitan entices them and prolonged hope for them so uh, there are some people who who said that they were muslims but actually they weren't they were hypocrites allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the shaitan entices them to go back to their um previous ways ayat number 26 that is because they said to those who hate what allah has revealed we will obey you in part of the matter but allah knows their secrets then how will it be when the angels will take them in death striking their faces and their backs so what is going to happen to these people who reject uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when their souls are going to be taken the angels are going to strike their faces and their backs that is because they followed what angered allah and hated uh, what earned his pleasure so he made their deeds worthless worthless ayat number 29 or do those in whose hearts is a disease think that allah will not bring forth their hatred allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says hypocrisy is going to be you know is going to come out in the open uh, hypocrisy is a disease that spoils uh, the soul and and waste your deeds and if we will we could show them to you and you would know them by their marks but surely you will know them by the tone of their speech and allah knows your deeds so the traits of the hypocrites can be seen by you know how they act how they how they talk ayat number 31 and we will surely test you until we make evident those who strive among you and the patient ones and we will test your affairs ayat number 32 and indeed those who disbelieve and turn away people from the way of allah and oppose the messenger after guidance has become clear to them can never harm allah at all and he will make their deeds worthless ayat number 33 oh you who believe obey allah and obey the messenger and do not make your deeds worthless um so obedience to allah is a must and obedience to rasul karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam so the commandments of allah are supposed to be be obeyed in accordance to the sunnah way ayat number 34 indeed those who disbelieve and turn away people from the way of allah 
then died while they were disbelievers. Allah will never forgive them. Ayat number 35. So do not weaken uh, and call for peace when you fight or for just cause while you are superior. And Allah is with you and he will never deprive you of the reward of your deeds. Encouragement for jihad. Uh, you know, one should encourage people for jihad when need be. This is what's being said. Uh, ayat number 36, the life of this world is only play and amusement. And if you believe and fear Allah, he will give you your reward and will not ask you for your wealth. So um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, you know, try to gain rewards for the akhirah, which is everlasting. Um, ayat number 37, if he were to ask you for it and press you, you will withhold and he will expose your hatred. So basically the hypocrites, it, was, it became clear who the hypocrites were because they didn't give zakat also or usher. And so uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that they, they would withhold it. That was another way to tell the hypocrites apart from the believers. Here you are, those called to spend in the way of Allah, but among you are some who withhold. And whoever withholds, then the only... Then he only withholds for himself, but Allah is free of need, and you are the needy. And if you turn away, he will replace you with another people, then they will not be like you. This is the end, completion of Surah Muhammad. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. We will begin a new Surah, Surah Al Fath, the victory. Inshallah, let's hear the Talawat first. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا فتحنا لك فتحا مبينا ليغفر لك الله ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر ويتم نعمته عليك ويهديك صراطا مستقيما وينصرك الله نصرا عزيزا هو الذي أنزل السكينة في قلوب المؤمنين ليزدادوا إيمانا مع إيمانهم ولله جنود السماوات والأرض وكان الله عليما حكيما ليدخل المؤمنين والمؤمنات جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها خالدين فيها ويكفر عنهم سيئاتهم وكان ذلك عند الله فوزا عظيما Indeed, everything Allah says is true. Surah Al-Fath, the victory. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Indeed, we have given you a clear victory. That Allah may forgive for you what preceded of your sins and what will follow. And complete his favor upon you and guide you to the straight path and that Allah may help you with mighty help. He is the one who sent down tranquility into the hearts of the believers that they may increase in faith with their present faith. And to Allah belong the hosts of the heavens and the earth and Allah is all knower, all wise. So there's a background to this surah. This is the sixth year of Hijrah and Rasul Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a dream. He had a dream that, uh, they, that he was performing Umrah that he was going for Umrah and uh, with, and so as you know the dreams of the prophets, the messengers are such that are true. So uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam decided to go for Umrah with his companions, 1,400 of them and uh, they went and uh, they were told by the Makkans not to enter Makkah. They, they resided in a place called Hudaybiyah and they, they you know, they sent Hazrat Usman uh, to find out what the situation was 
and a, a rumor uh, started that they had killed Hazrat Usman, which was a rumor, it wasn't true. So the, uh, there was a pledge made, a pledge of Rizwan, that they were going to take revenge for Hazrat Usman al Islam also. But when they found out that this wasn't true, it did not happen, uh, they understood that part. But they, the Makkan said, you cannot enter. You cannot enter. The, the, uh, the Quraysh people did not let uh, Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa enter. Um, and you know, they didn't let him perform Umrah. So they said, let's, try, they said, let's si sign a treaty of Hudaybiyah. Now the treaty of Hudaybiyah was such that they said, come next year for Umrah. Come next year. And they said that uh, right now you have to go back. And they were, there were many rules and regulations that they put forth, which seemed like they were all in the side of, of the mushrikeen. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this treaty of Hudaybiyah, this thing, this contract that they made, was a victory for the Muslims. Because after that, alhamdulillah, everything changed. You know, they did go back. The, the, the companions didn't want to go back. And they, didn't, they, want, they, they, they wanted to go forward and perform Umrah. And Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa uh, knew that he couldn't go forward anymore because the Meccans were, the Quraysh people were not allowing him. He signed this treaty and they were now supposed to return back to Medina. But uh, Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa asked the, his companions to take the Iram off and to shave their heads and not to, we will not go for Umrah this year. But none of them listened. And uh, uh, so uh, Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he had his wife with him, Umm Salma. He spoke to her, she said, why don't you first remove your Iram and shave your head and everyone else will do it. And that is exactly what happened and they went back. They came back next year. So this is, this is the background to this. We see in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Indeed, we have given you a clear victory. And, and Allah may forgive for you what preceded of your sins and what will follow. And complete his favor upon you and guide you to a straight path. And that Allah may help you with the mighty help. He is the one who sent down the tranquility into the hearts of the believers that they may increase in faith and their, uh, with their present faith. And to Allah belongs the hosts of the heavens and the earth. And Allah is all knower and all wise. So Allah, these people who were antagonists, these people of Quraysh, they, they uh, were, you know, they were very hostile. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah put calm and acceptance uh, in the you know uh, in the hearts of all the believers and they listened to rasul kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they did exactly what he said can you shut that thing, please Ayat number 5 that he may admit the believing men and the believing women to gardens underneath which rivers flow to abide therein forever and to remove from them their misdeeds that is a great success in the sight of allah Ayat number six, and that he may punish the hypocrite men and hypocrite women and the polyethistic men and the polyethic women who assume about Allah an evil assumption upon them is misfortune of the evil nature and Allah's wrath is upon them and he has cursed them and prepared for them hell and evil is the destination. And to Allah belong the hosts of the heavens and the earth and Allah is almighty. All wise. Allah has all power to get things done the way He wants to. Ayat number eight. Indeed, we have sent you a witness and as a bearer of glad tidings and as a warner, that you may believe in Allah and His Messenger and may honor Him and respect Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and glorify Allah uh, morning and evening. Indeed, those who pledge allegiance to you pledge allegiance to Allah only the hand of Allah is over the hands over their hands then whoever breaks the oath only breaks to harm himself and whoever fulfills what he has con covented with Allah soon he will give him a great reward so the pledge of Hudabia was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying is actually a pledge uh, actually Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam is a representative the pledge that they made uh, uh, is the, the hand of Allah was over them. The Pledge of Rizwan also and the, 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 the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Both Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is 
his hand was over it, meaning his pleasure was with it. Ayat number 11, those who remained behind of the Bedouins will say to you, our properties and our families kept us busy and ask forgiveness of us. They say with their tongues what is not in their hearts. Say then, who has any power at all to intervene on your behalf against Allah if he intends for you any harm or intends for you any benefit? Nay, Allah is all aware of what you do. Nay, you thought that the messenger and the believers would never return to their families that was made fair seeming in your hearts and you assumed an evil assumption and you, and you became a people ruined. So whenever the Muslims used to go to battle, people, the people who were left behind always used to think that these people will never come back, that they will die. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, you know, they came back, alhamdulillah, and whoever has not believed in Allah and his messenger, then indeed we have prepared blazing fire for the disbelievers. Ayat number 14, and to Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. He forgives whom he wills and punishes whom he wills, and Allah is off forgiving most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's two names, Al-Ghafoor and Al-Rahim are being mentioned here again. If you give up, so if you give up the insincerity, you find Allah is all forgiving. Absolutely. Ayat number 15, and those who remained behind will say, when you set forth towards the spoils of war to take it, allow us to follow you. They wish to change the word of Allah, say, you will never follow us. Thus Allah has said before, then they will say, nay, you envy us, nay, they do not understand except a little. So here are people who, uh, uh, who, used to, who used to say they're Muslims in times of good times, and in times of bad times, they didn't want to be Muslims. So at fav favorable times, they uh, would uh, uh, remain and say that they were Muslims. Say to those who remained behind, of the Bedouins, you will be called to fight a people possessing, possessing great military might. You will fight them or they will submit. Then if you obey, Allah will give you good reward. But if you turn away as you turned away before, he will punish you with a painful punishment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically saying that if you want to prove your iman, if you want to prove that you're truly believers, then join in with, in jihad. And ayat number 17. There, there is no blame upon the blind, nor is there any blame on the lame, nor is there any blame on the sick if they remain behind. So these, these are exceptions to the rules. These people don't have to go for jihad. The people who are uh, blind or, uh, or people who are, who are lame or people who are sick. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger, he will admit him to gardens underneath with rivers flow. But whoever turns away, he will punish him with a painful punishment. Ayat number 18, certainly Allah was pleased with the believers when they pledged alliance to you under the tree. And he knew what was in their hearts. So he sent down tranquility uh, upon them and rewarded them a near victory. So the treaty of Hudaybiyah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with those people who signed the treaty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought tranquility, even though the treaty of Hudaybiyah was mostly siding the mushrikeen. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, have patience right now, just sign this contract. Later on, you will see that you will be victorious. Ayat number 19. And much spoils of war, which they will take, and Allah is almighty, all wise. So here the victory of Khaybar after the treaty of Hudabiyah is being mentioned. Alhamdulillah. Allah has promised you much spoils of war that you will take and he has hastened his victory for you and withheld the hands of people from you that it may be a sign for the believers that he may guide you to the straight path. And other victories over which you had no power, indeed Allah has encom Allah encompassed them and Allah over all things is all powerful. Ayat number 22. And if those who disbelieve fight you, certainly they would turn their backs. Then they would not find any protector or any helper. Ayat number 23. The established way of Allah, which has already passed away before, and you will never find any change in the way of Allah. So Allah always helps his own messenger, correct? This is the established way. This is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
ayat number 24 Allah he is the one who withheld their hands from you and your hands from them within Makkah and after that he gave you victory over them and Allah is the seer of what you do ayat number 25 they are those who disbelieved and hindered you from the Al Masjid Al Haram while the offering was prevented from reaching its place of sacrifice and if not for the believing men and the believing women who you did not know that you may trample them uh, you would befall and would befall you any harm because of them unknowingly and Allah may admit to his mercy whom he willed if they had been apart surely we would have punished those who disbelieved among them with a painful punishment so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, you know, when they asked you not to enter Makkah, when you wanted to go for Umrah, you know, Allah could very well have made you go ahead and there could have been a war, there could have been a battle. But then they, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, but there were people there who had faith, who were amongst you people. And uh, they were down toward, they were weak ones who had never migrated to Medina. And they were living under cover also. So it wouldn't have been the right thing to do. Ayat number 26. When those who disbelieve had put in their hearts disdain, the disdain of the time of ignorance, then Allah sent down him his tranquility upon his messenger and upon the believers and made them adhere to the word of righteousness. And they were more deserving and worthy of it. And Allah is knowing of everything. The mercy of Allah to bring tranquility down on these difficult times at these difficult times ayat number 27 certainly allah has fulfilled his messenger's vision in truth you will surely enter al masjid al haram if allah wills in security having your heads shaved and hair shortened not fearing anyone but he knew what you did not know and he's granted besides this a near victory so they did go for umrah next year right they did alhamdulillah Ayat number 28. He is the one who has sent messenger, his guidance, the true religion, and he, that he may make it prevail over all the religions, and Allah is sufficient as a witness. Ayat number 29. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah, and those with him are firm against disbelievers and merciful amongst themselves. You see them bowing and prostrating, seeking the bounty of Allah, and his pleasure their marks uh, in is on their faces from the trace of prostration that is their similitude in Torah that their similitude in Injil is like the seed which sends forth its shoot then strengthens it then it becomes a thick then it becomes thick and it stands upon its stem delighting the sores that he may in, enrage by them the disbelievers. Allah has promised those who believe and do righteous deeds among them forgiveness and a great reward. So these are, these are the qualities of the Sahaba. Uh, they, they're being exalted here. And, uh, you know, and um, people who bow down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their, their marks are on their faces. They are the good ones. Uh, they are mentioned in the previous books also. Alhamdulillah, naturally these are the shining stars of Islam also who believed in Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, you know, naturally the one who, who was teaching them all these good things, the best teacher in the world, right? Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave tarbiyah, character building to these people. They are being mentioned here. This is the completion of Surah Muhammad. Uh, sorry, this is the completion of Surah Fath. Uh, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen We begin a new surah Surah Hujrat Surah Hujrat um, Alhamdulillah uh, We are going to now do Surah Hujrat Surah Hujrat uh, is a surah that uh, tells us how to behave with each other it, it has social norms social etiquettes are given in, in Surah Hujrat uh, also etiquettes to how to behave with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, you know not to go ahead of his his uh, rules and not and, and not to raise voices we're going to see during the life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how people used to raise their voices in front of Rasul Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells him not to do that um, 
and uh, alhamdulillah we are we are told general etiquettes do not mock each other do not pick faults of each other do not call each other by bad names uh, avoid suspicion do not spy do not backbite and the noble uh, you know how and um, true and false faith all these things are going to be covered in surah al hujurat hujurat means the inner apartments alhamdulillah rabbil alamin surah hujurat is the uh, surah number 49 of the quran majid it's a madni surah uh, it has two rukus and it has 18 ayats inshallah taala we will begin let's hear the tilawat of surah hujurat بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله واتقوا الله إن الله سميع عليم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تَرْفَعُوا أَصْوَاتَكُمْ فَوْقَ صَوْتِ النَّبِيِّ وَلَا تَجْهَرُوا لَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ وَلَا تَجْهَرُوا لَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ كَجَهْرِ بَعْضِكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ أَن تَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالُكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَغُضُّونَ أَصْوَاتَهُمْ عِنْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ امْتَحَنَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ لِلتَّقْوَى لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ إِنَّ الذين ينادونك من وراء الحجرات أكثرهم لا يعقلون ولو أنهم صبروا حتى تخرج إليهم لكان خيرا لهم والله غفور رحيم يا أيها الذين فَتَبَيَّنُوا فَتَبَيَّنُوا أَن تُصِيبُوا قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَةٍ فَتُصْبِحُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَوْ يُطِيعُكُمْ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ لَعَنِتُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانَ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَكَرَّهَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكُفْرَ وَالْفُسُوقَ وَالْعِصْيَانَ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الرَّاشِدُونَ In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. O you who believe, do not put yourselves ahead of Allah and His Messenger. And fear Allah, indeed Allah is all here, all nor. Putting yourself ahead of Allah and the Messenger, what does that mean? That means putting your desires before the desires of Allah. Right? Do not put yourself ahead. O you who believe, do not raise your voices above the voice of the Prophet and do not speak aloud while speaking to him like the loudness of some of you to others lest your deeds become worthless while you do not proceed so the respect of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the reverence for rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is being mentioned allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants uh, us even now this this is for that time you know people used to speak loudly and they used to speak, speak to rasul kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam just like they would be talking to somebody else allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says don't do that But how does it apply to us now? Now, now how it applies is that if we hear uh, a hadith of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, 
if he hears something about his sunnah, his ways of doing things, we should not talk loudly and say, no, this could not be true, that cannot be true, maybe this is wrong, maybe this or this is not right. Look it up, do some research, you know, instead of saying something. Don't speak over of what is being told to you. Ayat number three. Indeed, those who lower their voices in the presence of Allah's messenger, they are whose hearts Allah has tested for righteousness. For them is forgiveness and a great reward. This is so beautiful the way Allah is saying. Anybody who speaks softly in front of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says that those are the hearts that have taqwa in them. Those are the hearts that have, you know, righteousness in them, right? And uh, for them, what does Allah say? For them is forgiveness and a great reward. So respecting Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is so important, right? Ayat number four, indeed those who call you from behind the private chambers, most of them do not understand. So we, here the Bedouins, you know, the Arab Bedouins, they didn't have many etiquettes or manners. They used to come close to Rasul Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's house and they used to call his name and say, come out, come out, we need to ask you a question. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says they do not understand. And if they had been patient till you came out, certainly it would have been better for them. And Allah is off forgiving most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that if, if Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa have, would have come out of his house himself and then you would have met them, it would have been better instead of you calling out loud for him. Ayat number six, O you who believe, if a wicked person comes to you with an, with an information, investigate, lest you harm a people in ignorance, then become regretful over what you have done. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, always check your information. Where is your information coming from? Where is the news coming from? Is, are they, you know, tr trustworthy people? And if they are not, then verify the information. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that verify the news. Who is it coming from? Maybe we hear a rumor and then we spread the rumor and say it to somebody else, right? And if we do that, we might harm somebody and later on feel bad about spreading that rumor, right? So, ayat number seven. We go to ayat number seven now. And now, sorry, ayat number seven. And know that among you is a messenger of Allah. If he were to obey you in much of the matter, you would surely be in difficulty. But Allah has endured the faith to you and has made it pleasing in your heart and has made disbelief, defiance and disobedience hateful to you those are the guiding word, rightly guiding words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that so many people were saying so many things at the time of Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, listen to us, this must, listen to us, listen to what we are saying. Maybe you should do things this way, maybe you should do things that way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that if he were to obey you in much of the matter, you would surely you would surely be in difficulty. If he would listen to all that you are saying, you will, it will be difficult for you also. Because um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that don't try to persuade your way onto Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He knows what he's saying, right? And then in ayat number eight, it is a bounty from Allah and a favor, and Allah is nor all wise. Ayat number nine, and if two parties among the believers fight, then make peace between them. But if one of them oppresses the other, then fight against the one uh, that oppresses until it returns to the command of Allah. Then it, if it returns, make peace between them with justice and act justly. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, if two parties are fighting, then you be the third person who would reconcile them. Making two different people friends again or two different parties friends again is a very big reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and if two parties among the believers fight then make peace between them but if one of them oppresses the other then fight against the one who oppresses until he returns to the command of Allah. Then if he returns then make peace between them with justice and act justly. Indeed Allah loves those who act justly. Ayat number seven. And know that among you is the messenger of Allah. 
if he were to obey you in much of the matter, you would surely be in difficulty. But Allah has endeared the faith to you and has made it pleasing in your hearts and has made disbelief, defiance, disobedience hateful to you. Those are the rightly guided ones. Ayat number eight, it is a bounty from Allah and favor, and Allah is all knower, all wise. Ayat number nine, and if two parties among the believers fight, then make peace between them. But if one of them oppresses the other, then fight against the one that oppresses until it returns to the command of Allah. Then if it returns, make peace between them with justice and act justly. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. May Allah make us of those who are just. Ayat number 10. The believers are but brothers, so make peace between your brothers and fear Allah so that you may receive mercy. O oh, you who believe, let not the people ridicule another people, perhaps that they may be better than them, nor let women ridicule other women, perhaps they may be better than them. And do not insult your own people and do not call each other by offensive nicknames. Wretched is the name of disobedience after having faith. And whoever does not repent, then they are the wrongdoers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to stop hurting other people. Don't hurt anybody. We should not hurt anybody. How do we hurt people? We hurt people by backbiting. How else do we hurt other people? By calling names. How else do we hurt people? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them. Let not a people ridicule, making fun of people, right? Can you read ayat number 11 from your Quran, Aisha, loudly so we can all hear? Who you who believe, let not some men among you laugh at others. It may be that the latter are better than the former. Nor let some women laugh at others. It may be that the latter are better than the former. Nor defame, nor be sarcastic to each other, nor call each other by offensive names. Is he is a name Punch to no take Thank you for reading, Aisha. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the person that you're making fun of, maybe in Allah's eyes that person is better, mm -hmm. right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that that is not something you should do. Or you who believe, do we believe? We believe in Allah? If we believe in Allah, then Allah said, let not the people ridicule another people. Perhaps they may be better than them. Nor let women ridicule other women. Perhaps they may be better than them. And do not insult your own people. Or do not insult and, and your own people. And do not call each other by offensive nicknames. Wretched is the name of disobedience after having faith. And whoever does not repent, they are the wrongdoers. What is the second thing Allah mentions? First thing Allah mentions is that you should not make fun of each other, right? You never know, maybe the person you're making fun of, Allah may, in Allah's eyes, he might be or she might be better. Then what else is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying? Do not make fun, do not insult, do not call by nicknames. You know, bad nicknames. You know how some people say bad things about maybe somebody has darker skin or maybe has somebody has shorter height and you call them by those names, you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says don't do that. How much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares about people's feelings? Yeah? So we must stop hurting people. Let's never do that, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Ayat number 12. O oh, you who believe, avoid much assumption. Indeed, some assumption is sin. And do not spy or, or backbite each other. Would you would one of you like to eat the flesh of the dead brother? Nay, you would hate it and fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is oft returning to mercy, most merciful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, don't make sarcastic remarks about people. Do not make fun of people. Do not backbite people. And, uh, and do not be, don't, don't, sus don't be in suspicion of things. You know, don't make assumptions. You know, avoid assumption. Uh, don't think badly of others, um, you know. Uh, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, do not spy on each other. Do not spy on each other. Do not, you know, people have private lives. 
Don't spy on people. If they don't want you to know something, don't spy on them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something very, very scary here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that backbiting is like eating the flesh of your dead brother. Okay? So, why does Allah say that? You know? Why does Allah make such an analogy? I mean, it's very scary what Allah has said here. Yeah? Allah says that because the person who we talk about behind his or her back is not there to defend him or herself. Just like a dead body cannot defend itself. He's, he's not there. She's not there. We're talking about somebody who's not there. It's like he's dead. He's not in that environment. He cannot defend himself. She cannot defend himself. Just like a dead person cannot defend himself. And, you know, uh, you know, if one needs to say something about somebody, they, need, they should just speak to them directly to them in the kindest of ways. It's not, would we like somebody backbiting us? So, Muslim is not supposed to do anything that he wouldn't want done to himself. Correct? So, something that we don't like, we shouldn't do to others. This is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like at all. We all want to please Allah, right? No matter how much we want to backbite, or we want to ridicule, or we want to make fun of, we should not do it because we want to not get the wrath of Allah upon us, right? Okay, um, let's go forward. Let's go to ayat number 13. O mankind, indeed we have created you from one male and a female, and made you into nations and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the one most righteous among you. Indeed, Allah is all knower, all aware. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he created you from one male and one female, right? And um, nobody is superior over another. Nobody is superior. No nation is superior. No person is superior over another. And uh, only those people who are the best in deeds, are, uh, who have the most taqwa, are the ones that are uh, in Allah's sight better. So an account of our lineage or account of our heritage, we cannot claim ourselves to be superior ever. Ayat number 14, the Bedouins say, we believe, say, you have not yet believed, but say, we have submitted, for faith has not yet entered your hearts. But if you obey Allah and his messenger, he will not decrease anything from your deeds. Indeed, Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the Bedouins, the, 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 the people who used to live on the outskirts of Mecca, they used to say that they're Muslims, right? Uh, they used to say that they're believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, you are, you are, the true iman has not come into your hearts yet. You have just submitted right now. Uh, ayat number 15, the believers are only those who believe in Allah and his messenger, and then do not doubt, but strive in their wealth and their lives in the way of Allah. Those are the truthful ones. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, the ones who are true moments are the ones who believe in Allah and the Messenger and they do not doubt in anything and they strive with their wealth. They give zakat, they give sadqat, sadqat and, and they give themselves also if need be and they go for jihad if need be. Those are the true believers. Ayat number 16, say, will you acquaint Allah with your religion while Allah knows whatever is in the heavens and the earth? And Allah is all knower of everything. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically is saying, how can we tell Allah about the religion? Allah is telling about his religion and true believers are those known by their deeds. Ayat number 17, they consider, it, they consider it a favor to you that they have accepted Islam. Say, do not consider your Islam a favor to me. Nay, Allah has conferred a favor upon you that he has guided you to the faith if you are truthful. So a lot of people used to think that they're doing uh, Rasul Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a favor by becoming Muslims or Islam a favor by becoming Muslims. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, no, you should understand that it is you that has been favored. If you accept Islam, then you are favored. Yes, indeed Allah knows the unseen of the heavens and the earth and Allah is all seer of what you do. This is the completion of Surah Hujrat. 
May Allah help us to understand the, the messages in it and to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rules and regulations and to live in a society uh, full of, um, full of uh, happiness and peace, inshallah, without hurting anyone, inshallah. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk. May Allah bless you all. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.